Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Yes. Have you thought about um, what this quote means to you in your last, uh, what, decade and a half in L.A.? Do what you love and you'll never have to go to work. Or you'll um, never really fully work. It's mostly true. It's mostly, it's about 98% true. But you know, after you do 120 uh, movies, there are some that, uh, there's some days when it is work. But for the most part, if you do what you love, you won't have to go to work. Why have you chosen acting as a profession? I didn't choose acting. Uh, I, it, I think like most actors, um, you won't find any actors that have a sterling childhood to talk about think so you know mine I was uh, I was the fat kid the ugly kid the sissy kid uh, the smart kid with you know I made straight A's I couldn't throw a football I had bad acne I knew all the answers in Sunday school and I was really huge so um, the only the only way that you can when you're in that situation you can either fight back or you can find a way to deflect and so I just use entertainment for deflection I think I, I've never met an actor who I thought was any good who said well yeah my childhood was really great you know so um, I think just as a defense mechanism I chose uh, acting I could also have been a minister did you ever catch yourself fighting back and, and at what point did you turn it around and say let me use this as something oh yes absolutely yeah I remember vividly I, my my acne was so horrible that I would have uh, I remember a kid came in and said uh, can't you do something about your face and you know, only years and years later did I think of the snappy comeback. No, but I could do something about yours, you know. But you're never <laughs> badass when you need it. Um, I do remember it was shortly after that that um, I started doing imitations of our teachers and principals, and I didn't care if I got sent to the office as long as the kids would stop picking on me and they thought I was cool. Uh, and so the first time that they came up to me and didn't shove me into the locker, but instead said, "Hey, do that imitation of Mr. Rice you do." Yeah, do that thing. So I was their little performing monkey, but at least they weren't hitting me. Right. So that's been the whole thing is just, uh, the only reason I've ever done this is to say, please don't hit me. But if you entertain people, generally they won't hit you. Right. So it's good. So in 2013, we uh, met you at your church. I think it was at First Presbyterian in Hollywood. Yes. Beautiful church, absolutely gorgeous. And we'd done another interview with you prior to that. And when we turned off the cameras, I think you'd talked about how maybe you weren't sure about continuing with acting. Is this okay to talk about? Yeah, it is okay to talk okay, about. Okay, because we, we can stop if you want. No, 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 okay. it's good, yeah. Um, so 2013, let's see, my math is right. Three years, okay, yeah, it's good. Uh, what are your thoughts now? Because we're, we're on a movie set, by the way, for, for the people watching this, in Altadena, absolutely gorgeous place. It's at night. It's getting close to 11.30 p.m. and we've just watched you perform. It's a fascinating scene. I won't give too much away. I don't know if it's toward the end, but it's really cool. I wish people could see how neat it was up here and to watch your performance. We just kind of saw it from the side and you were in a very enviable position. I was watching them put this blood on you and it was just cool. But 2013, you said, maybe this isn't for you? Camera acting is funny because at some point you have to become a product or you're not able to succeed, right? So in the beginning, you do as much as you can just because you love it and you want to become established, in this case, become established in L.A. But at some point, if you're going to have any value to these productions, the only reason they're going to hire you at above scale, if they're not hiring you at above scale, there's no point in it unless you're rich, <laughs> the only way you're gonna get above scale is to become a product and a commodity. And that's the point at which y you have to find ways to reignite your passion because once you become that commodity, um, you lose a little bit of the love for the craft and the passion for the craft. It's so easy to let it slip away and not realize it. And the worst thing is a sense of entitlement. When you're the person that they bring in for two or three days, and then they put your name above the title or very high up. Uh, you're the sizzle. And they brought you in to do the wraparound story or whatever it is. You're adding value to the project. It's so easy to, f to feel, yeah, I'm, I'm entitled to that. And you're not. 
you're not, you know? So you forget how to be a part of the team. And I've been guilty of that uh, more than once, so I have to work on it.